cycle, as we know, and we saw record commodity prices probably in the last 12 months. Um, obviously, coming off the back of the Ukrainian situation and the war there and also the supply chain disruption with COVID, we did see a dramatic adjustment um, in terms of many commodity prices coming off quite severely and rapidly uh, towards the last end of the financial year. But I think if we sit back from that and appreciate um, what is going on in the globe, we fundamentally, we must have commodity prices that are going to be above the actual cost of production, whether it be the combination of capital and operating costs. And I think if you, you talk to most people in the street and look at the scenario, in the medium to long term, we will see and we comfortably believe, the market believes, we will see very, very, very strong commodity prices. So I think we're going through a transition, a transformation um, and adjustments in the market. But ultimately, you know, we're building a business for the long term, a global copper business for the long term. Yeah, and you're, you just announced a further 72-odd million in terms of really building out the Botswana operations. You just bought the, the Matza facility last year, and we were speaking about that last time around. But uh, is, is your production run rate that you're looking to achieve, because obviously there is going to be a little bit of the, the wind back when it comes to the Grassa, but in terms of what you're seeing in terms of how fast you're going to be able to run in the, the production side, is that going to be... And again, this is probably a thing for the entire industry when it comes to copper and not just you, but are copper miners like yourself, like the other competitors within the space, are they going to be able to produce enough copper to meet the demand is basically the point that I'm getting at. Or is there anywhere else that you're potentially looking to expand to really try and meet what is looking to be a deficit? Well, there's no question. If you look at um, you know the pundits, you look at the analysis in the street, you look at the major uh, commodity producers, you look at the analysis from um, uh, the demand side of the street, between now and 2050, there is certainly a view that there is going to have to be somewhere in the order of a doubling of copper supply. Um, and we just don't see where that's coming from. So rather than worrying about when we're trying to build a global business, and as you've said, Will, we're in Botswana, we're building and expanding on operation as we're in construction, we're expanding that to a five million tonne operation in months of the acquisition of almost two billion dollars um, you know six or seven months ago um, is going to work very hard towards us moving towards a 10 million tonne production profile of ore and getting to 150,000 tonnes of copper production in the financial 24 year but our aspirations are, are a business is to double that again within another five years post that so we're working hard and looking at business opportunities globally and off the footprints we've got, whether it be Western Australia or Australia, whether it be Africa and particularly Botswana, and whether it be in the Iberian Pyrite Belt, which is Spain, where we're focused at the moment. So putting all that together, but even in our small way, we see demand globally outstripping the supply chain. And that is the challenge for the industry. And the third largest commodity that gets consumed after iron ore and aluminium is copper. So it is going to be a struggle for... Um, you know, mankind to actually keep up with the demands that we are seeing um, for a healthier and greener and cleaner and a carbon neutral future.